Okay, and after a little while, we're going to have um, a project that has a, a reference to the URL of our um, uh, Unfuddle uh, repository. So let's take a quick uh, uh, look at what we've got here. It's uh, um, looks pretty standard to our normal Flex project, except we have icons over the uh, tops of our file and folder elements here. Um, that's showing us the status. In, uh, in all of this, this is a, a brand new project. It's not going to be committed. So um, let's say we, this, is, this is all we want our project to be. Let's commit um, this code to the repository. So what we're going to do is just right click on this um, and, or uh, go to the, uh, the team element of it. Let's, uh, well, uh, you can't really see it, but I'm selecting team. Um, commit and we're going to commit this to um, our subversion so it's got the changes that we have and this is basically uh, we're adding a file so let's go ahead and click OK and uh, it'll go through and actually add this file to our um, subversion repository so let's go to the repository and look at it via the web view real quickly okay we're back here on Unfuddle let's open up our test repository and now we can see that we actually have content in here and that we have the committed file that we actually added. Okay, now it's the time in the tutorial to actually talk about uh, some basic operations of using uh, the Flex3 subversion integration. So let's go ahead and uh, we've already seen importing uh, uh, an SVM project from our existing repository. Let's take a look at actually creating an SVM project, for, for example, from an existing Flash project. Um, uh, committing some changes and uh, just a, a quick overview of branching and tagging and how that relates through the IDE. Okay, to show how we um, uh, will import a new project, let's close our existing test SVN um, subversion enabled uh, Flash project and create a new uh, Flex project. And just, just generically, we'll call it uh, test SVN2 and uh, finish. So now we have a, a project and you know notice that it's not assigned a URL um, elements like the the files here don't have extra meta information like who um, checked it in and uh, what uh, revision it's at. So let's take a look at how we might go ahead and let's say we, this is an existing project you have in your workspace and you want to add it to your subversion repository. Um, what we do is we go down to the team element, right click and go down to the team and then just click share project. Um, CVS comes built in with uh, Eclipse but we want to select subversion, the SVN, and then uh, this existing repository location that we have is fine. If you've got several or whatever you would select the proper appropriate one from here and then um, you can use the project name since it's unique. Um, and then uh, this is the initial import. I'm not actually going to import it, but um, you would, at this point you'd click finish and it would add itself to um, your existing site. But let's, let's just cancel out of this and move on to, uh, we'll use our existing test SVN project. Okay, let's make sure that we're working with the, uh, uh, the original test SVN X MXXML file. Um, uh, this one's uh, been committed to the to the database already to the repository so let's actually just modify it. let's do that by just dragging a button button out onto it and then clicking save um, notice that the icon changed that uh, we've made a, a, a change that needs to be committed um, what we can do now is uh, let's just go ahead and commit it so I'll go down to team again and uh, select commit and then we'll, we'll, we'll change this file Okay, so now we see that the uh, the revision has changed to two, and the time and, and date and has been or the time has been updated to when this is actually uh, updated. If we go to the file and select again team, and then show history, um, a history panel show up and it can sh it shows the um, uh, the meta information about this particular file from the repository. Okay, so now's a good time to talk about. Um, um, the, the files that we have uh, in our local uh, workspace here is what's often referred to as the working set. These are files that um, 
that uh, are being actively worked on and th the thought is that each developer will have their own working set from which uh, they can commit uh, changes to the, the re a shared repository um, to get current versions of let's say uh, this file was modified in the meantime by another developer um, we we could select the file again go down to team and I know it's not being visible but and then select update and that actually goes out to the um, subversion uh, the version control and uh, requests that uh, this file be updated with the latest version and it may have changed uh, in, in the interim since the last time um, you've even edited it. And at that point, uh, you, you'd have to merge uh, differences between the two files. Um, okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about just really briefly is uh, branching and tagging and how um, that's actually accomplished. Again, um, we select uh, the, the, the object and go down to team, which uh, you, can, you can't see because the, the screen size is so small but we go to the branch and tag uh, dialog and that brings up a um, a series of, a wizard that steps through the the, the, the steps to um, uh, to create a, a branch or a tag for um, a branch uh, or uh, for a tag again this is because it's the tutorial normally we'd have a directory structure where the we would have a, a specified tags folder or a specified branches folder um, for the purposes of this tutorial let's just say we're going to create a tag uh, and this is to indicate say say this release one this is our first release this is the, the source code um, for release one so let's go ahead and create a tags directory and uh, a release underscore 1.0 directory um, again this is a little messed up because of you know we we checked out that root directory normally you'd have a project folder with a trunk and that would be a separate uh, directory but in this case this is it's going to look something like this um, the next thing we do is that we select the head version for uh, tagging you select the head version of the repository uh, you could also select a specific revision um, but usually that's that's more useful for branching um, select the head you can you can do both um, but in this case we'll select the head and go through and um, you add basically a comment that says you know, release 1.0 um, and then click finish um, I'm, I'm again I'm not going to actually do this but it would uh, go through and create a separate um, uh, tagged element in your code that you could go back to and refer to would be in the tags directory um, as uh, your release 1.0 version okay well that pretty much concludes this tutorial I know I glossed over a lot of the elements of the subversion um, uh, innards and and what you can do with it but uh, this is basically just a tutorial to get you up and running and get you to a point where you have uh, a running uh, and uh, a running subversion integration for, uh, for more information on subversion just check the web um, there's even a really good uh, subversion book or Riley-ish book uh, out there that's given away for free that covers a lot of topics in depth and also gives instructions on how to use subversion from um, the command line. Um, the IDE integration is useful for, for things doing quickly on the fly, but if you're a command line kind of person, um, you could also use that SVN command and uh, apply it to those files. Um, the sub, you know, you're in a directory, it's going to have um, a specified URL that points to the to the repository already so you can go in there and, and give commands like you know check in and check out files at the command line level which is very handy um, but again this is how to get you up and running with the subversion integration so in the IDE and uh, hopefully we've done that uh, thanks for watching this tutorial